Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com. And in this video, I want to give you as many tips as possible to help you get amazing fireworks photos. Now, over the past couple of years, I've released a bunch of different videos with basic tips on how to get photos of fireworks, as well as shared with you some of the fails that I've had when I've gone out to photograph fireworks. But what I want to remind you is that no matter what camera you have, even if you have a kit lens, you can get fireworks images because the manual settings are super simple and super easy to do, whether you have a $300 DSLR from five years ago or you have a $5,000 DSLR from today. You can get fantastic results. So what I've done is I've pulled my videos from the past and I'm gonna rerun them in this video because the tips and techniques, they never change. The basics and fundamentals of capturing these images they don't change. So follow the tips that are coming up in multiple videos that I'm about to show you, and you can go out there and get awesome fireworks photos that your friends are gonna love and that you're gonna love as well. Now I do wanna add one thing for mirrorless camera owners, is that it's much easier to focus on the fireworks because the autofocus that I've used in some of the Sony cameras Find the fireworks in the sky. Now you could use that for the first firework and then lock your camera in manually so you, the autofocus isn't gonna change and then you're good to go. Any other tips, Kitty? None, no other tips? The only tip I'll give you is be careful. You see how the cat only has one eye? He's got one eye. He lost it in the fireworks accident of 2017, all right? So he made a mistake there. Be careful when you go out there and enjoy these tips. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo.com, and I have 16 tips. It's not 60, but 16 tips to help you get better fireworks images. And these are in no particular order. So let's get to the list. Have a tripod. You need a tripod when it comes to shooting fireworks. You need a stable platform to capture these images because as we're gonna find out with exposure later, you need to shoot at slower shutter speeds, which means you can't handhold or you can, but the results may be a little bit shaky. So a very stable tripod or a moderately stable tripod is a good recommendation to have. Also, you don't wanna put the tripod so close to the ground just in case somebody stands in front of you because a lot of times people are either standing or around and they could walk in front of your camera and you don't want that happening when you are shooting fireworks. Get to your location early, find your spot and own it. Yes, I want you to own it. I want you to put your name on it, take some chalk, write it down on the ground or spray paint it onto the grass, but that is your spot for the night. The reason you wanna get there early is because you know it's going to be busy and you know there's gonna be a lot of people there. So you wanna find the location that is going to be best for shooting the fireworks that you have. A recommendation for how you can own your spot, well you could bring somebody else with you to spread out, or you could bring a blanket, if you're allowed to put it down, that owns your square. That is your square, you own it, you protect it because you don't want somebody eight feet tall blocking your view, standing in front of you. What lens should I use? Well. I liked using the 24 to 70 on the wider side on an FX body, and if I was to shoot with a DX body, I would probably shoot something like a 17 to 50 millimeter lens. Now, the reason I do that is because I think ultra wide angle lenses, unless you're really close to what you're shooting or you're going for a specific scene, probably won't show the fireworks as well as you could capture them. And I definitely don't recommend a fisheye lens uh, unless you really wanna take one fisheye picture. I'll allow you to shoot one fisheye picture if you really want, but generally speaking, somewhere in the range of 24 millimeters to 40 some millimeters, depending on what you're shooting, will benefit you the most. So it all depends on the situation. So each situation is going to be different. So try it out, see what works for you, but don't be afraid to switch lenses from wide to a little bit tighter when shooting your fireworks. Should I shoot horizontally or vertically? Well, it's personal preference. For those shots that you wanna get the whole trajectory, yes, that's right, the trajectory of the mortar before it explodes, well, then you wanna try to go vertical to show the whole thing and to get the explosion and to get the lights going that you can track it. But I sometimes like going with the horizontal when I'm shooting up in the sky where I just wanna get the explosion because I feel that the horizontal works much better for shooting. So try them both, vertical, horizontal, you decide what works best for you. Where should my ISO be? Should it be really high because we're outside in the pitch black or ultra darkness? No, 
I like to keep it around 100 or 200, depending on what your camera can do. The lower it is, the better you're going to be. You have to remember that fireworks are really bright, so there's no need to up your ISO to try to compensate for that because the fireworks are very, very bright. What should my aperture be? Well, I like to shoot somewhere around f8 to f16, and a lot's gonna depend on your situation and what you're in. I found that f13 has worked well for me for what I've been shooting, but what you're gonna need to do is take some sample images, and if they're too dark, well, then you need to open up to let more light in, and if they're too bright, you need to close down to cut back on the amount of light that you're letting in so that the fireworks show up much better. Now, for those thinking that you need to have an f4, sorry, an f1.4, an f2.8 lens, that doesn't matter here. When you're in the f8, f11, f16 range, every lens is going to do that. So you don't need the best of the best of the best glass with honors to try to shoot fireworks. Should I shoot on aperture priority or should I shoot on full auto? Neither. Manual is the way to go. You are gonna to wanna to set your manual exposure for this because the camera won't be able to determine what it should shoot the fireworks at because it's just happening way too quick and the meter is going to get way thrown off by the bright lights followed by the darkness. So manual is where you should be. So what shutter speed should I be using? Well, I like to use bulb mode. That's signified by a B in your camera, and most cameras do have that today. So what is actually going on here? When you press the shutter button and you hold it down, as long as you're pressing your finger down on the shutter, the shutter stays open. As soon as you release it, boom, the shutter's going to close. So you are figuring out the exposure and how long it should stay open. My suggestion is anywhere from two and a half seconds to five, six seconds. You're gonna have to feel it out to see what works best for you or to see if you wanna track something that's bright going throughout the sky for longer or whether you just wanna get the explosion at the end in the sky. If you're going for the explosion in the sky, wait for that mortar to, to launch and then press the shutter, hold it down, get the explosion, and then before anything else goes off, close it down. As in, take your finger off the button. I suggest investing in a cable release. Now, these don't have to be terribly too expensive. It's a cable that plugs into the camera and puts the shutter button right in your hand. So when you press it, you can control that bulb setting yourself. And what you're not doing is pressing down on the camera, which could give it some shake, which could then translate into your images. But as a little secret, all the images that you see on the post or in this video I didn't actually have a cable release. I just pressed the button and held it there myself. Anticipation. That's right, you wanna anticipate the explosions going off. Do you wanna show the entire trajectory or do you just wanna get that big explosion in the sky, or do you wanna have multiple fireworks going off? Well, anticipate these things happen. When that mortar shoots off, press down the shutter button. As soon as it explodes, leave it open until it just starts to fade away, and then you're gonna get that entire process that's going on. But this is a trial and error thing. You're gonna feel this out for yourself and just play around, but anticipate what is going on. Are there gonna be a lot of fireworks going off? Because at the very end, all the fireworks go off. Do you wanna get just a little bit of that, or do you wanna get a lot of that? That's up to you. Turn off autofocus, because how do we focus on the fireworks? Well, one rule of thumb that people say is you could turn the lens to infinity, that's that sideways eight thing, and then pull back just a little bit, and then you should have everything in focus. One thing that I found works for me is when that first firework goes off, my camera's already set to manual on the lens and everything so that it's not autofocusing, and I'll look at the back of the screen, and I'll use the light in the sky to focus the lens, lock that in, and then I'm good to go with my manual focus. Composite in post. That's right, if you like using Photoshop and you wanna have one large scene with so many different fireworks going off, you could always composite those layers together in Photoshop. That's a good idea if you wanna show an entire cityscape with a lot of fireworks going off because there's so many of them that do go off. Bring a chair. Yes, it sounds simple, but you're gonna be sitting on your ass for quite a while because you're gonna own your spot. You wanna make sure that you have something to sit on. So whether it's a pad on the ground or a chair, always bring a chair. Flashlight. You should have a flashlight. Why? Because it's going to be dark. What happens if you have to look for something in your bag or you drop something? How are you gonna find it in the dark? Are you gonna sit there with your cell phone trying to light it up? No, you need to have a flashlight so you can change the settings on your camera so that you can pick up something if you drop it or if you could shine it in somebody's eyes if they get in your way. But have a flashlight. If it's the summer, bring water. 
Bring your own water so you don't have to pay $27 for a little bottle of water. It's going to be hot, but have that water just so that you can drink it. I know it sounds simple, but bring some water. Bring some earplugs. If you're sensitive to noise and loud sounds and explosions, you may want to put some ear protection in to protect your ears. Don't just shoot the fireworks. Are there kids sitting around there? Could you imagine getting a shot of a kid looking up in awe at the fireworks and then getting the reflection of a firework in the kid's eyes? How amazing would that picture be? Sure, get those firework shots that you want to get, but if you're shooting multiple nights of fireworks, maybe focus on the families or the animals or the people at the park having a good time and try to get one of those reflections in the eyes of a child. Relax. Stay calm when you're shooting. If you're more nervous, you have a better chance of messing things up, so just stick with your gut. Understand what your settings and everything that should be that I've already mentioned, so that when it's time to go to work and get those firework shots, you're not freaking out trying to mess with your settings. Just change one thing at a time if you need to make changes, because you don't want to start changing multiple things and then screw yourself up when the fireworks are going off. And finally, remember, it's not like this only happens one time a year. Well, maybe it happens twice. So just enjoy it, have fun, learn from the experience, go out there and capture some amazing images. Let me cut in here real quick and say, if you wanna take better pictures in only 11 days, well, I created a free mini video course that you can download right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. <laughs> It's like the Magic Kingdom. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. I am here setting up to shoot fireworks right now. Um, there's band playing behind me. I've picked a spot so that I can run my video and run photos at the same time. I'm probably gonna start with the 14 to 24 on the D3S on the uh, tripod right here so that I can try to get the crowd in there. I wanna show the backs of the crowd. We'll see how that lights up, more so than just shooting the fireworks to put some dimension uh, up into the images. That's why I want to shoot from the back and get the whole sky in there. But we'll see what happens as it starts because I've never shot fireworks at this place. So I'll probably probably be at 200 ISO with this. Uh, I'll be at about 14 millimeters and uh, f8 to an f11 and the shutter speed. I'll probably sit there and do bulb and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, we'll play around. Just want to see what happens out here. Um, so recording right now is the D7000 on a three-legged thing Eddie tripod. Things working out really well right now. I'll do a full review on that at some point. But until then, let's see how these fireworks work out and we'll see how we do. See ya. All right, so here we are. I got done photographing the fireworks on July 4th and figured I would let some of the actual fireworks run in the background so what I did I had the Nikon D7000 on the let's see it was a three-legged thing tripod with a 16 millimeter fisheye lens on it so basically you can see in the bottom corner on occasion you can see my light from the camera recording the image or you can sometimes see the screen when I'm replaying the photos it was it was pretty cool to have this video running to capture this I'm wearing my microphone so I can talk to it if I want or so that it picks up all of this different audio but it was really a really awesome time I mean I got there like three hours early I picked a spot around where I thought most of the stuff was going to occur um, I ran into some other photographers there and we just sat and talked and you know this was the first time that I photographed fireworks at this location. I mean, honestly, it, it's pretty much the first time that I've ever taken fireworks pictures. I've, I've always thought about it, uh, but I've never actually gone out to do it. And I'm glad I did the research into the settings because when I shot, you know, a lot of this is trial and error, but when you have a good starting point, when you know that you need to set your camera to, say, uh, infinity focus, uh, I actually found it pretty easy to focus because what I waited for was actual firework to go off and then I was pretty quick to do a focus and then I could lock it on in manual uh, and I locked that in and it, and it wouldn't have to change so I started at f10 but I went to f13 um, and held it in in bulb and I also didn't have a cable release um, I know I recommend the cable release but in this case I didn't have one so I just basically held down the bulb and it seemed to have worked out 
very well. Um, early on, I wanted to shoot with the 14 to 24, and I knew right away that it was way too wide. I wanted to get the subjects in front of me to actually show up in the image so that you could see what was going on, but it really didn't work. So I had a change on the fly, and it was a good thing that I had a, uh, a really nice flashlight with me because I could check my focus with it. Uh, I could see things if I dropped it on the ground. It was just really good to have a flashlight with me. Um, and then what was really cool, I switched to the 24 to 70. You can see that a lot of the different exposures were somewhere, you know, you've seen some of the pictures pop up on the screen. Um, it was around like four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, and it's just really, it was really a lot of fun, and it's really a lot of anticipation. You know, seeing what's gonna work, is there a good, you know, burst of, uh, of light coming out of those fireworks at this time? I mean, sometimes if you held the shutter too long, there was too much light, and when there's too much light, then everything blends together, and it just didn't work out. But really, the majority of the pictures turned out really well, and what I found myself doing was recomposing a few times from horizontal to vertical, because as you can see here, as I go through some of the vertical shots, that the vertical shots just seem more interesting. You can follow the trajectory of the mortars as they're going off. Uh, you can see the American flag in the bottom right-hand corner. It just felt much better to shoot vertically. I also, you know, I still did some tighter shots where you can see that I didn't get the whole fireworks display in the image, but I still thought it was a cool image, uh, and it was just a lot of seeing what worked, and that's why I, I switched around a little bit. Um, some recommendations for the future is make sure you have something to kneel on, like a, a, a knee, some knee pads or something to sit on while you're out there, because you're going to be sitting a while while you're waiting for the fireworks to start. But I have to say, those starting settings, it's a really good place to go. Uh, the bulb setting with F8, you know, F11, F13, anywhere around there, you're going you're gonna to make it happen. And it, it's really, you just got to get out there and see it. And then once you're there, you can start to... Um, you know, at, interact or, or react to what's going on to see if you're framing the image right. Uh, because a lot is, you know, I'm pointing up at the sky, but I don't know exactly where the fireworks are going to start. So as soon as they start, I can compose where I want it and get moving. Um, yeah, let's see, what else do I have written down here? Not too much, but it was it was a lot of fun. And you can see in these images, the colors are cool. And, you know, really, there wasn't a lot of editing done after. It's just really pumping up the contrast, maybe a little bit of Mr. Phil light in one of the photos just to, to bring out the smoke. But I loved how the smoke was showing up, the sulfur was showing up in the images. Uh, and that's why the verticals just work better in this case. So, you know, some recommendations for the future for myself is concentrate on, on these verticals more than these horizontals. Uh, I would like to try some tighter shots, try to capture the whole explosion, but, you know, they're not as interesting as looking at the vertical shots after the fact. I mean, the verticals just really look good. They make me happy, and I think that this one right here is my favorite vertical from the whole thing. It uh, just looks very just Disney-esque, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. So, you know, anytime fireworks come up, I know we're going to have to wait another year again for big, big fireworks like this, but hey, you know, we're prepared. I'm prepared for next year. I had a lot of fun. I'd love to do it again. And I learned quite a bit from just sitting out there and observing and testing out these settings and making it work. So it's a real good ballpark place to start. Um, you know, go out there. I thought the 24 to 70 equivalent worked really well for me. Was quick to recompose, was quick to focus. That LED light, flashlight that I had really helped out quite a bit. So I hope that, you know, these images you can see all of the settings right on them so hopefully that helps you out you can see where I was how long I actually held down the bulb setting um, and go from there and hopefully replicate it or do better than what I did so I hope you guys learned something I definitely learned quite a bit out there shooting these fireworks thank you very much Jared Pullen fro knows photo.com see ya Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com here in Philadelphia overlooking the art museum. That's right, Rocky ran up those stairs one day. So what am I doing here today on a high perch? I need to be photographing those fireworks from a different angle because the parkway has 500,000 people down there and that's a lot of people and I don't want to be there. So how am I going to do this? Oh, don't forget Joe Jonas is going to be here tonight and he's hot. I love Joe Jonas. He's just like so dreamy. Anyway, fireworks, we're gonna shoot them. What am I doing? I'm gonna put the D7000 right here. 
That's going to photograph. That's going to do video of everything that's going on out there. Second, I'm going to be shooting with the D4. The D4 is going to have on the first-person shooter camera on top, the contour cam, and I'm going to wear the mic so you can hear whatever's going on. Um, other than that, I'm using my Vanguard tripods today. So how are we going to do this? Low ISO. Bump your aperture up. We're looking at f11 to f16. Why are we going to do that? So that you get a lot in focus. Speaking of focus, how are we going to focus on the fireworks? Some people say do it in infinity focus. I don't like infinity focus. I wait till a firework goes off, then I set it into manual, and I lock it in on the sky. I just find a firework, I lock it really quick, go to manual, boom, you're ready to go. Every picture should be in focus from that point. So then what are you going to do with your shutter speed? Holy crap, that's a loud sound. What are you going to do with your shutter speed? You're going to shoot it on bulb. What Bulb's going to do is I'm going to press the button down, fireworks going to go off, as soon as it explodes, let my finger go, closes the shutter, that's going to work. If you don't have Bulb setting, you can set it to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and put a black card in front of it when you're done shooting. Make your own shutter, basically, so that it doesn't stay open too long. And that's really it. So coming up after this, we are going to shoot the fireworks show that's happening here in Philadelphia over the Philadelphia Art Museum. And I can't wait for Joe Jonas to come on stage. I'm just going to yell. That's what we're going to do. So we'll be right back. So let's take a look at the fireworks shots that I captured on July 4th, 2012 from Philadelphia when I was in my buddy's apartment who is 26th floor overlooking the art museum where the concert is and also the fireworks. So I did take video. I used the D7000 with the 14 to 24 to 8 as I thought that the fireworks may be closer, and I started with the 24 to 70 on my camera and then realized that I need to have the 70 to 200 on for more reach because I was further away. But you can see some of the video running now. It is pretty far away, so it's not as impactful as if I was uh, like last year. But I will say that I thought that I didn't get anything good. And I didn't edit these for like a week or so until I sat down and looked at them and I realized there were some good pictures there. There are things that I would like to do better in the future and as we work through this, I'm gonna tell you some of those things that I would like to do better and maybe they're tips that you can use or you have used for your fireworks shots. So let's take a look, oh, let me make the screen bigger. There, that. One second, I, uh, one second F9, ISO 125, 112 millimeters. So you can see what I was going for here. How did I focus on this? Well, I waited for some fireworks to go off and then I manually focused right about here. I focused there, or actually I may have focused also on the art museum because the fireworks are gonna be somewhere around there. So you can see that this is one of those shots where you hold the shutter for a second, if it track, actually, no, I'm gonna start that one over again. When it's, this, when it's one second, that means you didn't hold the shutter for that long. It's more like boom, and you don't track the trajectory of the shells going off, so you don't get the track kind of like this. These have already exploded, then I snap the button. So there's different ways you can do it. And as you move forward, you can see that you follow this, and this is open for a little longer, 2.6, so you get a longer spread of the fireworks going off but I'm at F13, I'm at 200 ISO. That's in the range that I suggested. You know, one to 200 ISO, F11 to F16, uh, and then anywhere from one to six seconds. It all depends on what you're shooting. Now, I would have loved to have shot some verticals, but the problem was I didn't have the, I didn't put the plate on the proper portion of the 70 to 200 in the, in the, in the shoe in the um, tripod collar. If I did that, I would have been able to rotate the camera instead of trying to go vertical with a heavy camera that just went like this with the lens falling. So that's why there are no verticals here. I would have loved to have them, but I didn't get them. Four seconds, this time I waited. You get the whole firework taken off, you get the whole explosion going on, and it looks really good. F13 again, this time 85 millimeters. So there's times that I pulled back and then there was times that I zoomed in, but I definitely didn't want to cut off the fireworks. So here's one where I did zoom in more, and this one's very nice. Look at the 3.4 seconds. You have the art museum down here, and these are this is a nice firework. I like the way that these look. Now, in the background, I've got this. I've got the lights so that a plane doesn't crash into it. Um, what, I, what, what probably would be better is if I was down on the parkway with all of the people and I had a better angle 
a lower angle would make the fireworks look more extreme. I think these are very generic type shots. Sure, they're fine for, for photos, but straight on, looking down the art museum, uh, Parkway may have been better. So it's one of those things. I think that I thought that this would be good because I was close and I thought I was close enough and I thought that it would really give you the, the feel of it. But I feel that when you're closer to the fireworks, you're shooting up into the sky, I think that's going to give you a better angle. And it was good to see this from the distance because it's all a learning experience. Um, 1.3 seconds. This is nice as well. And you can see at 4.8 seconds, what I did here, will you load already? Why aren't you loading? Thank you. Um, you can see that there are no trails. This is the time where I waited until it already took off. And right when it was about to explode, I pressed the shutter down and left it open for 4.8 seconds. So all we have here is just the explosion and not the trails. Because there's different types of photos you can get. You can get the ones with the trails. You can get the ones with the explosions. So you have about 15 minutes. At least this one gave me 15 minutes to play around and get these photos. Um, I like these type of shots. There's more going on. It would have been nice if I was able to shoot tighter. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I could have gone another 100 millimeters. But see, this one I went further, so I can leave it open uh, so that I didn't cut the top off. It's nice that you've got this down here. It's nice and sharp. You've got this over here. Looks good, too. And, and as we get closer to the end, ah, this is great. 5.7 seconds. That's really cool, too, to leave it open for 5.7 seconds at four, F14 ISO 200. Look what's going on here. You've got these explosions and you've got the ground explosions and it makes for a really cool image. Vertical again. Let's just, let's just look at it vertically and see what would happen. Just to get a, a, a feel. Oop, hey. Oop, hey. Develop. Crop. Vertical. Now, it may not be perfect. Yeah, you wouldn't want to cut it off, but it would look good if it was a vertical. I do like that. I like the colors in this. So I'm pretty happy with what I was able to capture. I know you guys captured some really nice ones. This is nice as well at 3.1 seconds. I waited again until the fireworks were at the top and then exploded so you don't get that trail. It's just like boom and they're really cool. This is one of my favorite ones. I like the dancing of the light 3.3 seconds. It seems that three second mark, two to three seconds looks pretty good. I like this one as well, fireworks inside of fireworks, 2.8 seconds, F14, nice color, and we're getting close to the finale where a lot of stuff happened. Look at this, look, look at all the explosions here, 3.8 seconds, this time I followed the track of some of them, had the explosions of the other, and then I think we're going to come up on some nice ground explosions. I don't know where this one's coming from, uh, but that's some nice color. This is a really big explosion, five seconds this time. This one was tracking a couple of them until they exploded. And this is near the finale. Is that one of the last ones? Yeah, it's the second to last one. But look at that. Six whole seconds, F-18. You got all the ground stuff going on. You've got the big ones going on. And you got the last one right here, which is uh, one of my favorite ones. Look at, the, look at these explosions right here. Look how nice they look on the ground. Nice, nice, nice. That looks really good. So those are my fireworks from July 4th, 2012. I know you guys got a ton of stuff. You can see all the settings here on the screen, so you can try it yourself either next year or anytime the fireworks are going off. But this is the ongoing series because this is the third or fourth video I've made about fireworks. Uh, so yeah, the tips are simple. I, found, I find personally, well, you need to be on a tripod. You need to either shoot manual or with a long exposure where you can block the front of the lens um, for like a five, six second exposure. You move the cardboard so that light doesn't interfere with it. Um, F11 to F18 or F11 to F16, 100 or 200 ISO at anywhere from one second to six or seven seconds. Just experiment with it. You have a good 10 to 15 minutes during these fireworks shows to capture something. Uh, so that's, that's it. You know, I had fun. I learned again something this year. Next year, I will try something different. So it's an ongoing process, and it's all about getting out there and trying something different and just shooting and not being happy with the same shots year in and year out. And there you've got it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com.
Fireworks.com, and I want to talk about my fireworks experience from July 4th, 2015, and give you some feedback about what I liked, what I didn't like, and the situation that I was in. So a friend of mine last minute said, hey, do you want to come to a roof party that is behind the art museum in Philadelphia, which is where the fireworks get fired off. So we were going to go on the roof, we were going to shoot photos, so I didn't know what to expect, so I brought out the D4S, a travel tripod, a 24-70 to and 70-200, to because that's what I wanted to shoot with, and I'm going to talk about the results when I flip back here, because I ran into some issues. But that's always going to happen, and you have to figure out what to do to get around those issues. So let's take a look at some of the photos right now. So here we go. I ended up shooting this one at 190 millimeters. Actually, you know what? I'll show you non-keepers, because there are always non-keepers. You can see that I was far away. Um, I, sorry, I wasn't that far away, but the vantage point is I didn't know where the fireworks were going to shoot off. I didn't want to have this in the background because I didn't, I couldn't get the city in the background. Uh, and, and, and so basically, here, let me show you this. Let me show you this photo. This was the look, uh, the area that we had. You have this down here, which is a roof in the distance, because I thought maybe the fireworks would have been higher in the sky, but they weren't. So because of this issue... I had to make a change because I didn't want to have that in the foreground and my idea was to shoot wider shots to get the whole fireworks explosion in there but that wasn't going to work because the street that I was on it didn't look good. Now yes, photos on uh, you know with interesting uh, buildings and, and, and architecture in the foreground can look really good and I do encourage you shooting that. But in this situation, this wasn't going to work out. So on the fly, I went from the 24 to 70 and switched over to the 70 to 200 and focused on just shooting tighter shots of the explosions in the sky. Good band to, to edit to, by the way, explosions in the sky. So that's what I ended up doing. I had to think on the move. I'm like, all right, this isn't going to work. Well, I only have 10 minutes of fireworks or 12 minutes, whatever it is. Let's go for tighter shots, find it in the sky, and get it right. Now, the settings are so simple. I made those other videos talking about it, but if you haven't heard settings before and you're just looking for it, it's really, really simple. Low ISO, aperture around F11 to 16, depending on what you're shooting. Shutter speed, shoot on bulb, uh, or have a shutter release that allows you to hold it and then take your finger off. Anywhere between one second to five seconds or longer, depending on what you're doing. The longer the exposure, the higher you want to bump your aperture to compensate for the bright ass light so you're not going to overexpose too much. So those are just some quick tips. Tripod, weight the tripod down, and you're good to go. But let's look at some of the other ones that I had that I liked. Um, so this is okay. You know, it's not spectacular, but you never know. It could be a shot that's usable for somebody. Uh, 2.4 seconds F16 ISO 100 shooting with the D4S this time. Not very good. You know, you want to get the whole thing going on, but again, like I said, it was hard to find where everything was going to be based off of where I was located. Maybe next year I'll go out onto the parkway and try to shoot up and get some of those larger uh, shots or get the art museum in the background. But again, there's not many vantage points out there that are great, especially when there's 300,000 people. Now, I don't mind something like this. Sure, I would want to get more into the sky uh, to get more of the explosions, but... I'm happy with the results here. I'm happy with multiple explosions. So this is at 6.2 seconds. So I guess more than five seconds. Uh, and I compensate, no, I was at F16. So it works out. Sometimes you just play around when there's a lot going on and you're gonna get some fantastic results. Obviously that's all red. This is one of my favorite ones from the evening. I like what's going on here. I'll put up some DNG files so that you guys can play with it and download it, but I like what's going on here. I don't mind this at all. Uh, multiple explosions going on, 3.9 seconds F16, 135 millimeters. So you're getting you know, the nice results coming from that. Eh. I wish I was further back for this. Uh, that would have been better. Because here, here's the view. You know, let, let's just show you the exposure. That's what the buildings look like there. And yeah, you can't really see them here, but I think shooting lower, at a lower angle, shooting up would have been better if I was closer. I just don't like having the building in the background because it doesn't give enough contextual uh, results to the image. So there you have it. This is like the last one, five seconds. Uh, lots of raining down. Those raining ones look better. So you can see that when you're out shooting fireworks, it depends on what uh, the, the type of fireworks that are using. The big burst ones that stay illuminated in the sky make for much better fireworks in my or much better photos in my opinion. So so that's that's really it. 
Um, the results of the images, they're okay. They're not spectacular by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't what I expected going to the roof that I was going to. I didn't have a clear shot of the skyline or anything to make it even better. So what I focused on was shooting tighter. That's just what happened. So there's always different things that you can do, and there's always issues that are going to arise when you're out shooting. I so happen to have to deal with the one that I dealt with last night, and it's fine. I'm okay with what I got. Would I like better shots? Of course. But now I'll do better next time because that's what it's about. You shoot, you shoot, you shoot, and you get better. So again, uh, that that's it. Hope you guys had a great time shooting, and that's where I'll leave it. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.